This is Daily Armenia, Civilnet's Daily News Digest. Here's what you need to know today. Armenia's security chief has declined to attend an upcoming meeting of his counterparts from other former Soviet countries in Russia. Our men Grigoryan will not take part in the meeting in Moscow tomorrow, his spokesperson told the Armen Press News Agency today. No other details were made immediately available. The apparent snub comes less than a month after Pashinyan and his foreign minister similarly chose not to attend a summit of the leaders and top diplomats of other ex-Soviet countries. Even after the Kremlin indicated it wanted to arrange talks between senior officials from Yerevan and Baku on the sidelines. There have been no formal direct talks between Yerevan and Baku since Azerbaijan's lightning offensive against Nagorno-Karabakh in September, which led to the collapse of the local government and the mass exodus of nearly all of the region's Armenians. Grigoryan's non-participation comes as Armenia's relations with Russia, its traditional security guarantor, continue to fray, with anger mounting in Yerevan over Moscow's unwillingness or inability to come to Armenia's defense in line with its treaty obligations. Last month, Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan said he was seeking to diversify Armenia's defense relations, but insisted he is not considering withdrawing the country from its security arrangements with Russia. In related news, Armenia's top army brass held talks late last week with high-level officials at the United States military headquarters in Europe in the latest sign of Yerevan's deepening defense ties with Washington. Lieutenants General Edward Astrian, the chief of Armenia's armed forces, and Stephen Basham, the deputy head of U.S. European Command, discussed Armenia's security environment, defense reforms, and defense cooperation with the United States, according to official readouts. This was a milestone event as we deliberately and incrementally develop our defense relationship, Basham was quoted as saying. We are interested in receiving support and learning about best practices from our partners, especially the United States. These discussions lay the foundation to plan and conduct future combined training, Astrian added. Though the meetings took place last week, the Armenian government disclosed them to the public only yesterday. Back in Yerevan, Levon Kocharyan, the son of former President Robert Kocharyan, was released from pretrial detention yesterday after agreeing to take up a seat in parliament as a member of the Armenia Alliance, an opposition bloc led by his father. Earlier in the day, Armenia's Central Election Commission confirmed the younger Kocharyan was eligible to take up a seat vacated last month by then-lawmaker Armen Charchian, who resigned amid allegations of vote-buying. Within hours, Kocharyan was set free, as parliamentarians are granted immunity under Armenian law. He had been held since September when he was detained on charges stemming from his participation in anti-government protests that rocked Yerevan after the collapse of Nagorno-Karabakh. Upon his release, Kocharyan told reporters the charges against him were nonsense and said he hopes the many other people who are in prison today on trumped-up stupid charges will also be released soon. He declined to answer questions on his future activities as a lawmaker. In other news, Armenia has formally submitted a bid to host the 2027 Francophone Games, according to Deputy Foreign Minister Vahe Gevorgyan, who confirmed the development yesterday. Other bidders include the West African country of Benin. The Francophone Games are an athletics event put on every four years by the Francophonie, an international organization representing 54 mostly French-speaking countries. Even though Armenia is not a French-speaking country or a former French colony, it joined the organization in 2012, citing its special relations with France. Over the summer, Armenia's freestyle wrestling team swept the competition at this year's Francophone Games in Kinshasa Democratic Republic of Congo, with all five team members taking home medals, two golds, two silvers, and one bronze. And finally, the civil net number of the day is 200. That's the estimated number of Armenians who were evacuated from the village of Agavno in Nagorno-Karabakh last year before it was handed over to Azerbaijan as part of the Russia-brokered ceasefire declaration that ended the 2020 war. We sat down with one of those evacuees, Aida Avagyan, who relocated with her four children to the town of Goris in southern Armenia to talk about displacement, loss, and hopes for the future. You can find the full report up now on our website and YouTube channel. And as always, please follow CivilNet for the latest news and independent reporting from our contributors on the ground here in Armenia.